What's up, YouTube? It's Faith of Raven Repair Co. I just wanted to make a little uh, update on the self-hosting project I was working on. So uh, I've added a new streaming capability to it because I noticed the one thing that was lacking to me was the fact that I couldn't play any of my MKV files. Now this is really important because generally, all like most of the media that I want to stream off of here is like retro anime. And so that's usually an MKV, which is a container format because then you can store multiple things like subtitle data, uh, various audio languages, etc., uh, etc., et and not being able to do that through the server is kind of a bummer. So what I've set up here is so I log into my next cloud interface. Oops, sorry, let me fix that. Uh, there we go. So I log in, and so I have an external hard drive set up here. It's a one terabyte drive. Uh, that's basically all I need right now. I'm planning to eventually expand it to four terabytes. Uh, basically with like four one terabyte drives kind of stacked on top of each other all with different purposes so one's like a music drive one's a movie drive one's like uh, like an anime drive and the other is just like an etc drive so as I go into here you can see that I have everything put into nice little categories here unfortunately this is where the nice little categories end because I'm a complete like data hoarder who doesn't rename anything so as you see, I'll go into my anime here and you'll see Lo and behold, all these names here don't really, you know, they look kind of messy, but whatever. That's not the point. So let's say I want to stream an episode of Urusei Yatsura. So I'll click this first episode here. I'll get the media could not be loaded either because the server or network failed or because the format is not supported. Now this is to be expected as uh, this is just an HTML5 web player and H most HTML5 video players don't have the capabilities to read MKV files. Which, you know, it's fair, it's a compressed format, it's all, like pretty resource intensive. So what I have to generally combat this is I have a Jellyfin server running on the same box that also has access to the exact same files on the exact same drive. So I can click here, so I don't even have to actually leave my Nextcloud instance to go to my media server. And it'll just pop up here. What I really like about Jellyfin is it's pretty much like a free open source Spotify equivalent. So I'll just log in here. I can, the nice thing is you can also make multiple accounts so you can share your information and whatnot. Like you can share certain subfolders to certain people. It's just a really cool service all in all. So uh, I'll just go into my anime here. And so as you can see here, uh, a lot of these have the cover art. Some of them don't, unfortunately. Uh, I need to see if I can get the, uh, the anime identify. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but there's a plugin that's basically for helping identify anime. I need to see if I can change a couple things with it because some of the uh, the art for a certain anime doesn't show up. But others does, like for example, like Dominion Tank Police works just fine, but new Dominion Tank Police uh, doesn't. So anyway, I'll go into here and you'll see, I get this whole actual description, kind of like how Spotify would give you a description of what you're about to watch, along with a list of seasons. You scroll down, you have a list of cast and crew, which is really cool. Uh, and you have a more like this, which this is all just going to be basically everything in the section because I pretty much almost exclusively have retro anime. So uh, let's say I want to actually watch this. So I just go to season one. I'll click the first episode here. You can also see that all the episodes have their appropriate metadata, which is super cool. Like that. A nice little fan art comes up. And this custom interface comes up, which is super neat. Uh, this is going to happen in this video because I'm downloading uh, on my PS3, so my Wi-Fi is not the best right now. But that shouldn't happen anymore past this. As you can see, the subtitles work. Everything seems to be working. Uh, I'm not sure how the performance is going to look on the video itself, but this is like performing super smoothly. Like There's no frame drops or anything like that. Uh, let me see if I can actually... You can also disable subtitles and whatnot, and if... You're, if the option is there, you can also like change the uh, the audio language on the fly, which is super cool because I tend to kind of flip flop between whether I want to watch my content subbed or dubbed. It really depends on the day and how you know how many brain cells I have left by the end of the day. But uh, sometimes it takes. It doesn't normally take this long. Again, my internet is super duper slow recently because I'm downloading a bunch of games on my PS3 right now. So let's see if I can get this to play back again. There we go. So as you can see, uh, subtitles aren't there anymore. 
and yeah, so let's say I want to also listen to some music. So I can normally just listen to that through Nextcloud because Nextcloud does have a pretty decent audio player, all things considered. But I'm just going to say that Jellyfin kind of blows that out of the water, and I'll show you why. So I go into my music category here. Uh, so the suggestions thing is kind of a mess right now. But, you know, I just generally go to my artists because usually when I'm listening to music, I have something specific in mind. So I'll go listen to... Horsehead, because that probably won't give me copyright strike. Uh, Horsehead, if you're watching this, please don't copyright strike me. Uh, so I'll put on a couple seconds of Love Gang. And so it starts playing, works pretty well. Uh, as you can see, you know, regular full-fledged full media player. Also has a more like this section, which I'll admit isn't entirely accurate because Judas Priest does not sound like this. Uh, Ostraka doesn't sound like this especially. Um, I maybe Starfucker, maybe, but so if I want to like, you know, go to the playlist here, I can just skip songs, I can pause, play, seek, all that works really well. This also works incredibly well on mobile, both the uh, video and audio streaming format, which is super cool. And I'm really excited about this because... I can just take my entire music and movie and anime collection on the go with me anywhere in the world. I just have to leave my server somewhere plugged into the internet, and I can just go to my domain, I can upload things if I want, I'm still setting up a reverse proxy for CubeBitTorrent, which I'm not 100% sure is going to be safe, I'll report on that later. So I can actually just directly torrent things to my box in case, like, you know, I want to stream something but I don't want to have to download it where I currently am, and then, like, uh, upload it to the server. Just being able to like directly download it would be a lot better. But anyway, I mean, as it works right now, this is a super cool setup because all I need to do to upload anything is just go back to files. And there we go. Let's see here. Uh, I'm not going to show uploading anything, but I'll show that, like, you know, this is just worlds better than the uh, default music player. So, oh, that's not even working, actually. I forgot you have to install that as a separate program. I'm going to leave that in. But anyway, that's all I really want to talk about with this video. If you have, I hope this inspires you to do something similar. It's not super hard. You do have to have some knowledge of how uh, an Apache web server works. So the full setup I'm using to give you a kind of demonstration of uh, how to set this up yourself is... So I have a Chrome box, so I'll, I forgot to note in the beginning of this uh, that Jellyfin is an x86 only application. So you have to be running this on like, you know, an x86 processor. It's not going to run on a Raspberry Pi, unfortunately. I think there was some talks about them possibly porting this over to ARM, but right now it's x86 only. And uh, so yeah, you basically just have an x86 compatible device. I installed DietPy to make uh, some web web posting stuff a little easier because I run a, a Nextcloud instance, I run a WordPress instance for my work, um, and that's really all I run besides this. But I mean, like, it just helps streamline the process of installing certain things to run a web server so much. But anyway, uh, where was I? I got a little sidetracked. Sorry. So there's that DietPy, uh, you know. A decent enough internet connection. I'm running this on possibly one of the worst plans you can get in Canada, actually. So I'm with the uh, ISP Acanic, not known for being great. I'm on their lowest speed plan because it's the cheapest. Uh, but I mean, I get pretty acceptable performance in other places. Like I've tried this server at like my partner's place, which is you know other side of town, not too terribly far. But I was able to watch like a bit of ex like serial experiments lane just fine. And yeah, I'll try to make a tutorial in the future about how to do this. I'll probably set up a VMware instance to kind of give you a demonstration because I don't want to have to go through installing this on physical hardware again because I broke so many things trying to get this to work. But anyway, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop them in the comments. I hope this, uh, this helps you kind of get an idea of how you want to set up your personal media server. If you have any tips you want to send me even, let me know. And yeah, pretty much, I uh, hope you all doing well. Uh, Drop a like, comment, subscribe, whatever. That's what YouTubers say, right?